gets decapitated by the machine in the back. <laughs> All right, so we've been covering a lot of the same types of shows recently. Insert business with problem, send in man with show, we watch breathing out of our mouths with our glazed eyes, and then show end, happy ending. Also, with a lot of tension baked in. <laughs> so I figured, let's keep the good times rolling and cover another show of this variety. Only this one is just plain goofy. It's a goofy show. It definitely has a place on the spectrum of reality show fakeness that leans more towards the, well, the more fabricated end. But I will let you guys be the judge of that. The show in question is Mystery Diners, one that you guys have requested a bunch and we're finally taking a look at. Two episodes specifically, because they are... Short. Sure. Now, unlike most shows similar to this, Mystery Diners does not focus on the shortcomings of the business owners themselves, but instead works with them to try and uncover who in their staff is to blame for whatever problems they may be having. And they do this by sending in Mystery Diners. Hmm? They send them in to go undercover and get to the bottom of it. Now, if that sounds kind of silly, that's because it is. Now, the first thing I noticed when looking at their list of episodes is they really get their money's worth when they go to a city because you will see three, four, sometimes five episodes in a row and they will be in the same city. They do not waste any time at all. And the host of this show is Charles Stiles. And aside from him looking like the blueprint of every NASCAR driver put together, he has the least amount of charisma I have ever seen in a TV host ever. Who all knows your, your uh, recipe to your barbecue sauce? He talks kind of like a local business owner doing a commercial for their business. Why'd you call us in here? This friend of mine come in the other day and said, hey, I tasted some barbecue over in Arlington in a food truck and the sauce was almost identical to ours. I didn't take much faith in it because this guy fell off his horse too many times. Yeah. But I had two or three other people told me the same thing. So I sent one of my employees over there and got some of it and it is my barbecue so. Also, I love the shade that he's throwing at his friend here. Like, well, he is kind of an idiot, so I didn't really think much of it. But then two of my other friends who aren't idiots said the same thing. So I thought I'd look into it. So the conundrum here is Terry is concerned that another barbecue spot is using his secret sauce recipe, and he thinks one of his employees is selling it under the table. Now, I'm not gonna lie to you guys. Not right now, at least. I, I'm still always good for a good old fashioned lie. But if you gave me two barbecue sauces to taste test, I would not tell the difference. I am, I am simple. My palate is simple. But now it's time to wire this place up with enough hidden cameras to rival the Bellagio, as well as introduce a few actors who will be going undercover for this operation. Mystery diner Ben will go undercover as a prep cook, and Justin and Andy will pose as businessmen. Now they really make it a point to keep bringing up how the manager Michael is family and would never sell them out like this, so. We'll see where that goes. I also forgot to mention that before doing this operation, they had a lab confirm that these two sauces are indeed the same sauce, down to the secret ingredient, whatever that is. I find out it's my cook, Bobby. We're gonna cure this old fashioned way. I can tell you that. We won't have to fire him. He'll be ready to leave. I promise you. Okay, sounds good. Did you fucking get that? Bobby is supposed to be protecting your recipe and he's sitting here sharing it with the rest of your staff. I mean, what's gonna stop him for the right amount of money from sharing it with one of your competitors? We are not but five minutes in and everything is already going to shit because apparently the entire kitchen just knows the secret recipe and it's not a big deal to anyone. I also love how they're playing up Bobby the head cook just being a dick that doesn't give a shit about anything. Like you cannot get more on the nose than him reading a newspaper in the kitchen like this. I just wanted to say, man, my, my girlfriend was over in Arlington last week and she got some food off a food truck. The sauce tasted really similar to Cooper's sauce. Just wanted to let you know about that sauce. I appreciate it. Help me out, but I will take care of this, okay? All right, man. Don't worry, I'll take care of this. Okay, yeah, man, I just wanted you to... What do you, what do you mean, take care of this? Just get back to work. So now we send in our second plant, a hungry businessman looking to get in on this sauce. How you doing? My name's Andy. Nice to meet you. I'm Bobby. Turn. How can I help you? Today? The sauce is what I'm most interested in. You know, at this point, don't you think that Bobby would just be like, okay, wh wh why is everyone talking about this goddamn sauce all of a sudden? It's not even that good. I'm curious to know if I could uh, buy the recipe from you. How much are you talking? Huh. How much are we talking? Well, I was thinking maybe something 50 like- 50 bucks. 50 bucks? That, that's it? Okay, 40. Take it or leave it. Uh. Okay, 
deal. Well, who, who should I speak to? to? Well, Terry, I mean, that's got to make you feel a little bit better. I mean, that is a big relief. Now, up until this point, they were kind of painting Bobby as the bad guy, but I think more than anything, he just doesn't give a shit. Like, he's not out here maliciously trying to get a quick cash grab off the secret sauce. He just, he just doesn't care about anything. <laughs> Which leads me to believe my hypothesis at the beginning may have been correct. It could be the manager. Or one of the other 17 people working in the kitchen that also know the recipe. Hey, Mike. Sir? Nice to meet you. I'm Andy. Nice yeah, I run an organic foods company, and we're desperate to get a killer barbecue sauce, and I know this would be the one. I'd be open to that. Bobby mentioned something about Terry. I guess he's the owner, so should I be talking to him? I actually bought the restaurant from him a few years ago. Oh, I got gotcha. you. I make what? all the business decisions here, so I just keep him around as a figurehead. Damn, that dude's just like, oh, Terry? You mean that geriatric prick that sits in the back? No, no, no. He's, he's our fucking mascot, if anything. I run this shit. I'm just wondering, does Michael actually own the restaurant? Did he literally buy this restaurant from Terry? Because if so, what is Terry even doing here? I wouldn't be surprised if Charles just said, hey man, if you, uh, if you don't own this place, we, we should probably get out of here. Like, we should not be doing this here with you right now. Give me the right price. He has no authority to be doing what's going on right there. Also doesn't even sound like it would matter because it doesn't sound like you actually even own this place. Do you own this place, Terry? Well, there's a few things that I need to make sure that you're sure. aware of. Sure. Like so what? First of all, you're not going to mention Coopers at all. Nothing. Done. No Coopers? No Coopers. Don't even know who Cooper Second, is. Second, cannot be selling one off limits completely. Absolutely. I mean, at least he said don't sell it in the area. I mean, that could be just because he doesn't want Terry to find out. But also, maybe he's being courteous so that they don't lose business. Maybe? So now it's about time for Terry to go kick his nephew's ass. Or bring him back to the control room as they always do to show them what they've been doing. To their very, very obvious surprise. I'm totally confused. Well, let me tell you what's going on. My name's Charles Stiles. I'm with a company called Mystery Diners. Your Uncle Terry called my company because somebody has been selling his secret recipe for the barbecue sauce, and you, his two sons, and his wife, and himself are the only people that know the recipe, plus Bobby, the head chef. That was like five different people he just listed off there. <laughs> the only people that know this recipe are Terry, his entire family, you, the head cook, Bobby, the entire kitchen, everyone at the lab. The you see the board over here? You recognize this gentleman down here, Andy um, and Justin? They work for me. They're undercover mystery diners. And you made a deal with them that you cannot distribute or sell that sauce here because I don't want my Whatever. Uncle Terry to find out or hear about it. And you can't sell it. No, no, no. Okay, maybe Charles was saving all of his energy for the end of the episode because he seems more pissed about this than Terry at this point. He is scolding a grown man that he barely knows like he is his own son. This is bull Let me have the check. I want to see it. Yeah, that's made out to Michael. It's not made I out to- I was being honest. Look, you know, you were being honest. Check with to Coopers or to Terry. Bull not to you. Okay, I'm still confused. Did Michael buy this business from Terry or not? They go back and forth from just being the manager to owning the entire restaurant, I can't fucking keep up. I've ran this company. You try to find someone else that's gonna work 18 hour days at times. I'm gonna find somebody that doesn't sell me out. Oh yeah? You're fired. But in conclusion, Michael is out. I knew it from the beginning, and now that I am saying that out loud, it is not really something worth bragging about. In a weird way, I am grateful for Michael the knucklehead because he inspired me to start bottling and selling my own barbecue sauce at my discretion. And after all of this chaos, Terry has now decided to sell his barbecue sauce, which I'm assuming will require to list all of the ingredients in the labels. So that is that is perfect for him. Charles, this is for all your hard work and a little token of appreciation. Here you go, I got you a little something for helping us out. <laughs> okay, what's this? Well, it's my nephew Michael's decapitated head. I'd like you to have it for all your help. Oh, oh man, wow, that's um... Holy shit. Now, something refreshing about this show that we don't see in many others is the fact that this establishment is still open. I just checked. It's nice to not finally feel the level of disappointment after pouring all of my energy into an episode about a place just to find out it gets closed. I mean, there are some that I don't feel bad about closing, and I am... I'm very glad that they are closed. So, as I mentioned before, we're going to be watching one more episode of this, and it's one that I'm very excited about, for reasons that you will see in a few seconds. <laughs> By now on this channel, if you know me, you know I'm a sucker for a bowling alley episode of anything. The science of food in a bowling center is it shouldn't detract from your game. All right, strike one, has John ever been to a bowling alley before in his life? And that's exactly what we've got today. Also, with this episode, we are skipping six seasons to season nine, and I think that's actually only a three-year difference. So 
they once again covered a lot of ground. They get their money's worth with production, holy shit. My name is Charles Stiles. For over 20 years, I've helped thousands of restaurants eliminate their problems. In over 20 years, I've helped thousands of restaurants, most of which happening in the last seven months. Now with this new episode, just watching the intro alone, it sounds like because they've been at this for so long, people are getting kind of savvy to the whole operation here. They know mystery diners. But people are becoming savvy. Mystery diner? No, we're good. So to combat this, they will be bringing in private investigators to help out the whole operation, and I'm just glad that they're acknowledging it because a lot of reality shows don't admit when they're at a certain point where they are just too big for whatever their illusion is to actually work. Grandma Jean, ready for lunch. Hey. Watch, it was just take 50 and this guy turns around and looks at him like, oh, hey guys. Oh, what's that? Only the thing I do all the time. Of all the things that uh, we have on our menu, the double cheeseburger really stands out. And it comes with our famous fries. Trust me, you're gonna love it. I'm sorry, but anytime a restaurant has to really talk up their fries like that and say, our world famous fries, it's almost always the most bland fries you've ever tasted in your life and desperately need to be dipped. But I will take it because at least this bowling alley is not shying away from bowling alley food. They're not trying to pull a great 66 switch up on us. We're gonna do a quesadilla, add a lot of texture and flavor, but I'm gonna show them how a quesadilla can be grease free. Oh, okay, so not good. Okay, so the main issue with this place is they've got some rowdy customers that keep driving away the good business that they wanna retain. Also, their revenue coming in is not matching bowling and food sales, which sounds important. So we're gonna start at the top with the manager as well as the lead bartender, the two that our owner Brian think may be the cause of all this nonsense. And what are we gonna do first? Well, get our money's worth out of that PI and have them run background checks on them to, I'm assuming confirm they did work whatever jobs that they said that got them the job at a bowling alley. Um, I just did a couple searches on Corbin Bowl and a bunch of videos and images popped up, but there was one on a very popular online video site that really caught my eye. I think we should take a look at it. Okay, I guess by background check, he just meant look around on the internet a little bit. <laughs> hey guys, roll that video. Hey guys, roll that video. Why don't you do it? It's right fucking there. I'm Ali and this is Car Bowling. Oh, <laughs> Yeah, okay. <laughs> I had to double take when I first saw this and then remember this was released in 2015 because it was a bit of a jump scare to see Vine. Even before seeing the page, my gears were turning watching the video and I was about to make a joke that this feels like a Vine, mainly with the way that he's saying, I'm Waleed and this is car bowling. Like that sounds like such a Vine. I wanna know who the this kid is and how we get that video off the site now. It's such an old man thing for him to say, I want this off the website. Right now, get this off the internet. Uh, sir, it it doesn't doesn't really work that way. It's it's not really ours to take down. <laughs> now we're beginning to craft the narrative because who owns that car? You may be wondering, probably not. Well, none other than the lead bartender who has not mentioned her window being broken outside of work. So she must be behind this tomfoolery in some way or another. Now, in regards to our mystery diner for the episode, we just have one person going undercover. It's a bartender and she's going to be doing some digging to get to the bottom of this. So um, I was looking online, kind of looking around and I saw a video about a car getting hit with a bowling ball. It looks like it was in the parking lot right here. Do you know anything about that? I don't know anything about that. And just like the barbecue sauce thing from the last episode, it's always so forced having a new person come up and ask an oddly specific question that's very out of place like this. All right, so I was already getting some very uh, heavy BS vibes from the show from the last episode, which was six seasons ago. And if you know reality TV, you know that it only gets more off the rails the longer a show goes on. Ready for lunch. But in this episode, seeing this group of teens walk in like, yo, what's good? Party's in the house. Dude, it is a bowling alley at 2 p.m. What are you talking about? And also that one guy having a skateboard, like they are crafting textbook punks right here. <laughs> Has anybody seen my f I'm missing my f guy. What the fuck did he even just say? Are, they're not even trying at this point. I'm missing my You gotta admit, it's pretty fucking funny seeing this grown man be pushed around by a group of teens like this. Like, oh, oh, oh guys, come on, stop, give me a break. Okay, what size do you wear? <laughs> These ruffle rousers are absolutely destroying this business from the ground up. It's honestly pretty impressive. Excuse me, man. Excuse me. Oh, this is 
some respect. Did he just try to dunk on this guy, calling him daddy daycare because he is a dad, bowling with his kids? Like, dude, you gotta let some of these stew before you say them out loud. You gotta, you gotta control your What are they doing? Where you going to them out there? Make sure they're not getting in trouble. I'm gonna kick them out. I do not understand this very strange loyalty that this adult man has to these teens. Like, they either kicked his ass bad one time, or he thinks they're giving him a discount when they sell him an eighth for 50 bucks. What I don't understand is why Taylor's letting this kid break her car window. And more importantly, why is she allowing him to disrespect her like this? Yeah, hold on. I already forgot about the whole window thing at this point. I, I really hope they get to the bottom of this bizarre ass mystery. 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 Mystery diners. Hey, Kendall, I want you to go do some recon with Waleed. Oh. Yeah, I'm on, I'm on, you know, our famous online and stuff. So. Yeah, like a web video. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, I am super famous on webvideo.com. It's where I make all my web videos for the internet. Dot com web video web video dot com. So whose car was that? Oh, that was uh, Taylor. So how do you know Taylor? She's friends with my older brother. I told her I took the money with her, and she was all happy. You get money for that? Yeah, I get about like thousand dollars. Wow. How does that work? All right, let's pump the brakes on this twenty thousand dollar payday from Vine. No fucking way. Unless he says, "I'm Walid, and this is Car Bowling," brought to you by Old Navy. It's something to wear. Now watching this newer episode, I'm starting to see what people were talking about on Reddit when I was looking into the show beforehand. Most people were saying that the show got way too over the top towards the later seasons and borderline unwatchable, except for this guy at the very bottom who just said, you shut the fuck up. <laughs> that just might be Charles though. Are you hearing this? This guy while leagues thinking by breaking things and shooting all these videos that somehow or another is gonna translate into making thousands of dollars and becoming famous. You know the owner's just thinking, man, I, I gotta start making vines. Look, I get that they're being distracting, but that looks like it was going to be a dud no matter what, let's be honest. I'm not leaving the box. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> he just gets decapitated by the machine in the back. I didn't realize it until now, but this is the most decapitation jokes I think I've had in a single video. It also might just be the only ones I've ever made in a video. <laughs> so now after the manager has kicked the boys out, the owner is fed up and he is coming down here to kick the boys out, as well as bring the manager and the head bartender into the control room to reveal the big sting. Come on in. Brian. You've been filming us? What the fuck? Oh my God. Look, I get these guys absolutely suck ass dick and balls at their jobs, but regardless, if you took me to the back and showed me all of this, I'd be freaked out because this goes beyond just a surveillance machine in the back of the retail office. You know, after last bar rescue video being in a bowling alley and this episode of Mystery Diners being in a bowling alley, I think it's safe to say we just need a show dedicated to bowling alleys. I see no reason why that wouldn't crush on Tubi or something. You allow this kid Waleed and all of these idiot friends to come in here. You're allowing them to do all these crazy antics inside the bowling alley. I mean, they're down here on skateboards. Are you kidding me? To be fair, the manager did say that they had to leave and then they did that little skateboard stunt, but I'm not going to completely pin this on the manager. He at least eventually put his foot down, kind of. If one of these videos became viral, and that's great advertising for Corbin Bowl, any press is, is good press, right? I mean, that's good stuff. She was saying some dumb shit. I don't know what she was going on a tangent. So you want me to believe that Wally throwing a bowling ball through a window of a car is somehow or another going to be good for this man's business? I mean, that was my car. So mm -hmm. I, I mean, I don't, I don't even think that should be even a part of this. I mean, I can do what, whatever I want with my own property. You know what? You're right. You can do whatever you want with your property on your own property. But the problem is your car's parked in this man's parking lot. What if that bowling ball had missed the window, bounced off the roof, and rolled down and hit a customer? He'd get a lawsuit. He could lose his business. Yeah, I guess it would be quite damning if this skinny little guy threw a bowling ball and it somehow made it on top of a roof. Then maybe we would be in some kind of predicament. You know, you guys are an absolute disappointment to me. You've disgusted me. You know what? You guys are both fired. You know what? Forget it. You guys get out of here. 
I'll find someone else to work for $7.25 an hour. All I tried to do was help my friend Waleed make this cool viral video to help put this place on the map, and I get fired for it, and my car window is smashed out. Okay, calm down. Mystery diners didn't break your fucking window. Let's take it down a notch here. Since being fired, Michael has accepted full responsibility for his actions. Taylor has started work at a new job and is still trying to collect reparations from Waleed for her broken window. I know this is kind of the idea of the show, but I, I just love how at the end of every episode it just ends with uplifting stock music playing over people losing their fucking jobs. You know, I wish they would have been able to do an episode on the Lucky 66 bowling alley and then at the end be like, well, after doing all of our reconnaissance, it seems like all of your issues really stem from the two mechanics in the back. You should probably fire them. <sighs> yeah, I fucking know. And once again, a happy ending to half the people in this episode. And this place is still open too, so good news all around for most. Well guys, that was Mystery Diners. I hope you did enjoy. Uh, if you did, go ahead and leave a like rating down below. Let's me know you enjoyed the videos, comment, share with your friends, all that helps me out a ton. If you're new here and you did enjoy, subscribe, hit the notification bell so you can stay up to date on everything I post. A lot of you guys don't know I have a PO box I haven't talked about in a while. It's in the description of every video if you wanna send me anything, whether it be artwork, I'm always looking for stuff to put up back there. Um, babes, of course. All of those, you guys are helping out. Send those babes in, please. Don't forget to check out all my social medias, at Chris the James, everywhere else. With all that being said, I want to thank you guys again for watching, and I will see you next time. Goodbye. Mm -hmm.